Happy Halloween, everyone. For once, I'm actually covering a Halloween episode near Halloween. <laughs> How about that? Anyways, the streak of PPG 2016 episodes that feature a Halloween special continues three seasons in a row. First was the squashing, second came Midnight at the Mayor's Mansion, and now we're wrapping up the trilogy of spooky scary Halloween specials with an episode titled Witch's Crew. In all fairness to that title, it's the best of the three in terms of its creativity and relation to the episodes that take place. Obviously a parody on Witch's Brew, and it features a crew of witches, although the title shouldn't be the possessive form of Witch's Crew with an apostrophe, but rather the plural variation of the word because there isn't a witch that has a crew in this episode, Rather, it is a crew of witches. Semantics, I know. The reboot is already known to fail at grammar, and I'm just illustrating another case of it. Even when an episode title is good, there's still some flaw to be found, it seems. Considering this is yet another princess episode, I had initially thought it was referring to her crew, but as it turns out, her gang members are nowhere to be seen, so that is not the case. Regardless, let's dive into an all-around decent Halloween special. <laughs> Lizard, you. Eye of Newt, gross. Can of creamed broccoli, repulsive. We begin by getting presented with an establishing shot depicting a haunted house of some sort, notably a different haunted house than the one that was shown in the squashing, with a pretty appealing design to it. Seriously, I think this house actually looks really cool. So cool, in fact, that it's my background for this review. If that's one thing the show never really failed to get right, it's the background drawings. Anyways, Princess is seen slapping together some sort of magic brew that will allow herself to be the most beautiful girl in school, although she doesn't make it very far before the Powerpuff Girls show up to put a stop to her. We checked the records. You don't have a license to practice the dark arts. Chalk this up to another situation where him really deserved to show up, but for whatever reason was shafted despite this being a perfect opportunity for him. Oh well, missed opportunity. Luckily, or unluckily, depending on your perspective, we've got another mainstay villain character who shows up instead. No! <laughs> Give a mojo all of your black licorice and nobody gets hurt. Oh, wonderful. Mojo's trick-or-treating got him wrapped up in the exact same exchange that the girls were having to stop Princess. Last I checked, she didn't even have her porch light on, so Mojo wasn't even respecting the fact that she didn't have any candy to give out. Well, Princess doesn't want the girls to foil her plan, so she rushes through chanting the rest of her spell. But the girls and Mojo cause so much havoc in their attempts to act that her brew ends up getting knocked over and spilling everywhere, turning the Powerpuff Girls into evil witches, Princess into a fire-spitting ogre, and Mojo into a black cat. It's worth noting that this spell spill somehow managed to turn the girls evil whilst not affecting Princess or Mojo's personalities at all whatsoever. Maybe there's a stipulation here that a side effect of this spell is that it turns anyone it contacts evil, hence why the two evil characters wouldn't really be affected, but that's never acknowledged or hinted at in the episode, so really who's to say that was an actual thought that was taken into consideration when producing the episode? Considering the show's track record, I'd say it's more of an inconsistency, because let's face it, the girls in this episode are more evil than Mojo and Princess combined, so you would think that the brew would at least increase Princess and Mojo's evilness factor to the same levels as that of the girls. But no, it's literally just the same Princess Morbucks we already know, except she's an ogre. And as much as I may not care for Princess in this show, she is the main character of the episode, more so than the girls, so really, she does deserve her own title card background design. I mean, between that, Can't Buy Love, Super Sweet Six, hell, possibly even Aliver, there were enough episodes to warrant her own yellow card design. I mean, Mojo only got a whopping four with his, so why couldn't Princess get one too, you know? It would've been really awesome if like every villain got their own colored card, that way it wasn't always just mixed for season three, you know? There's a him episode coming out that could've been red, the Silico episode I reviewed, Lights Out, could've been black and green. It would've been awesome. Also, I'm kinda confused on what determined that Princess turned into an ogre, the girls into witches, and Mojo a cat. I mean, I get Mojo being a cat because that's what his Halloween costume is when he's in the room prior, but wouldn't it be more consistent if the other four characters were also dressed up in these respective outfits? 
Considering that nobody else in the room was wearing anything remotely related to what they've been turned into, it's hard to say that the costume was what determined them to become their respective Halloween creatures. Regardless, the girls fly off to cause havoc now that they've been turned into a crew of evil witches, and Princess attempts to figure out a way to turn herself back to her original form so that she can get back to making herself the prettiest girl in school. Lucky for her, she and Mojo find out that there's a reversal spell in her spellbook that can help them return everything to normal. Although, there's not really any logical consistency that coincides with the items that are required for each of these characters to be returned to normal. I mean, the book states that a personal attribute of every person affected needs to be put in a new brew in order for the antidote to work, but she literally just pulls a whisker off of Mojo and that's good enough for him to be covered despite the fact that his whisker isn't even a part of his original body because chimps don't have whiskers. The other items Princess needs to collect are a pigtail from Bubbles, a toenail from Buttercup, even though the girls don't have toenails, but anatomy, who cares, am I right? And Blossom's bow. So even if one wanted to argue they just need any old strand of DNA from the person, uh, no, Blossom's bow contradicts that. And again, I wouldn't consider Mojo's whisker or Buttercup's toenail a personal belonging of theirs, so who knows what the actual trend amongst these items really is. It just feels like something was randomly picked with zero theming. But regardless, the two set out to find the girl's whereabouts, although not before Princess traumatizes a small child who's just trying to find her long lost friend, Freddy Krueger, somewhere over on Elm Street. Do you know where Elm Street is? Don't you see I'm busy? <laughs> One detail I really enjoy is how the legs of the child's costume changes to reflect a cooked chicken. That was a nice and subtle visual gag. They quickly stumble upon Bubbles, who's in the middle of vacuuming up all of the candy from the fellow trick-or-treaters that are currently wandering around. Now, in order for her to achieve one of Bubbles' pigtails, Princess tricks her by creating a path of bubblegum that leads her to a giant wad of it. Although, instead of using that to distract her long enough to snip off one of her pigtails, Princess instead shows up and challenges her to a bubble-blowing contest. Inherently, this was pretty smart on Princess's behalf, seeing as she essentially trapped her by using a competition to trick her. Plus, I love the irony of Bubbles blowing Bubbles being her undoing. And she gets one of her pigtails snipped off without a hitch. Next on the list is Buttercup, who Princess easily stumbles upon thanks to the trail of tiny mayors that happens to go running by at this exact moment. It turns out that Buttercup is turning all of these innocent people into tiny mayors with her method of tricking them, although to me that actually sounds more like cruel and unusual punishment. Princess decides to use this trick-or-treating habit to her advantage and somehow sneaks into a random house off-screen of some nameless individual that we will never meet and answers the door in their stead when Buttercup goes flying up to it. Trick or treat! Trick! Between Princess magically finding a giant wad of bubblegum and just magically getting inside some stranger's house, especially with an appearance of an ugly ogre that spits fire, it's a wonder she hasn't been chased out of town yet. She tried to burn us with fire! Let's burn her with fire! Well, speak of the devil, guess that child from earlier decided to gather up an angry mob and chase her out of town. Can't say I'm surprised considering the citizens of Reboot Townsville seem to have this habit of forming a mob mentality over every little thing, even when they're in the wrong 99% of the time. Arguably, for once, they're not actually wrong for wanting to chase Princess out of town. I mean, she did incinerate this child after all, but at the same time she is the hero trying to stop the PPGs from wreaking havoc and destruction amongst their neighborhood, so really, they're trying to evict the lesser of two evils. Hence why I hate them. They should really be going after the Powerpuff Girls right now. And then again, she's not really the hero or anything because she's not collecting these items to help the girls. She's doing it to get her own body back so that she can go back to her rich, popular life. Also, I kind of brushed over the whole buttercup toenail thing, but this is directly stated inside of the spell book, which, I don't know, kind of makes everything seem like the spell was actually written for this specific situation. Okay, what's next? Ew, a toenail from buttercup. Great. I mean, what, was this spell required to have three superpowered children, a regular human kid, and a talking chimp in order for it to work? Because the antidote seems awfully specific to these exact characters with these exact characteristics. I mean, why is Buttercup mentioned by name here? 
Or is just one person's toenail always required and why is it specifically Buttercup's? Does another person have to have pigtails? Other moments in the episode seem to imply it just needs to be a personal attribute, so why the toenail specifically when it has nothing to do with Buttercup? Like, nowhere has Buttercup ever been associated with a toenail. That whole aspect just comes across as gross shock value that was needlessly unnecessary to tell the story. Well, anyways, back to the whole angry mob thing. Lucky for Princess, she manages to lose them after diving into a bush in the woods, although Mojo gets stuck in a tree and it begins raining. Oh, does a Mojo get down from a tree? Hmm, guess I'm on my own. So instead of helping him down, Princess just abandons him there and puts him at risk for pneumonia while she heads to a nearby cottage for shelter. So much for them working as a team. If I were Mojo, I wouldn't even bother trying to help her from here on out. I mean, she just straight up left him alone to die in the woods. It is here where she is greeted by an elderly woman in pink that's not suspicious at all. Nope, no siree, not a chance. Who invites her inside to get out of the rain whilst also offering her some free cookies to munch on while she tells her about the joys of not having fame, money, or power. You don't even need money to be happy. <laughs> And this knocks Princess out for a bit until she wakes up in her kitchen, realizing that this elderly woman is actually either a cannibal because she knows Princess is a human, or she eats ogres and loves doing it for whatever reason. Honestly, I don't know why anyone would find an ogre appetizing, but I guess Blossom, I mean this elderly woman, is an exception. Actually, I don't know why I'm even pretending to hide it. It's not like I'm building up to a joke or anything. It is so apparently obvious to pretty much anyone who watches this, but she literally reveals herself to be Blossom after Princess questions how she got the better of her. You must have knocked me out with those cookies! No, I knocked you out with the realization that money doesn't buy happiness. Which I mean, I guess that's fitting for something that would absolutely horrify Princess. Conveniently enough, Mojo somehow got out of that tree, which is never explained, and he rescues Princess from falling so that the two of them can steal Blossom's broom after she gets dazed from the scalding splash of broth that hits her in the face. Although she manages to meet up with her other two sisters and they give chase after Princess and Mojo as they head straight back to the house to undo this mess. While the fact that Blossom is on a vacuum is a kind of subtle joke in the sense that a vacuum does the same job as a broom, making it a fitting replacement, it's not enough to catch up to Princess and Mojo because the three of them crash directly into a tree. Guess they've never seen George of the Jungle. Well, regardless, Princess manages to make it back and tosses in Mojo's whisker, Bubbles' pigtail, Buttercup's toenail, and Blossom's bow. Although Mojo points out that Princess needs to toss in something of hers too. And after a hard but brisk decision, she relinquishes her crown to the sloppy, slimy broth. There was some reluctance there, but only slightly more than the amount Blossom showed when dumping her first A plus at the bottom of the sea. The brew spontaneously combusts after the utterance of the ancient chant, and the antidote spell undoes everything that was previously hampered by the accident at the beginning of the episode. Although somehow, despite tossing in the bow, crown, and pigtail, each character gets those respective things back after the thick green fog clears. Thus, with a suspenseful and explosive finale, all five characters can go back to their normal lives and Blossom asks Princess if she learned her lesson, even though Blossom as she is now was not in control of her witch form actions and thus cannot take credit for teaching Princess any sort of moral or lesson. Come to think of it, would she have even had the memories that she experienced as the evil witch? That's a question that's left up in the air. Unless, of course, the Powerpuff Girls were in on this the whole time and just pretending to be evil when they were turned into witches. And that would alleviate the discrepancy I observed earlier regarding the personality changes for the girls but not Mojo or Princess. However, the girls never admit to this, nor do they even hint at it, and it would seem really, really convenient if they actually planned on this happening before the episode began. So it comes across to me as though believing that to be the case would be giving the episode too much credit and is not its intent in the slightest. I mean, there is zero evidence proving this to be the case. It's not a reasonable conclusion to draw. The girls are definitely definitely, genuinely, experiencing a personality change as these witches. Still, Princess snobbishly walks out of the room and the other four just watch as she drags some sort of lizard tail behind her, which I don't know how that happened because it was supposed to return her to normal, but if the antidote had side effects, why weren't the other four affected? And I'm sure that wasn't a thought because the cheap laugh was deemed more important. Now out of my way, losers. Should we tell her? Nah. Alright, so, which is crew? 
It may have some faults in its writing, but of the three reboot Halloween specials, I'd actually say this is probably my favorite one. Midnight at the Mayor's Mansion did nothing for me, and the squashing, while having a great third act, did not hook me with the first two. Are there better Halloween specials out there? Absolutely, but of the ones that the reboot has to offer, this one definitely feels the most at home in a Powerpuff Girls show. It's not really trying to say anything profound, it's just kind of a decent episode that takes place during Halloween, with some minor inconsistencies. Suffice to say, I'm glad the episode turned out as well as it did, and by technicality, this is the best Powerpuff Girls Halloween episode in existence. So, the reboot has that going for it. <laughs>